The legendary Frank Sinatra used to sing how he did it his way, but he had nothing on Katie Lang. As a vegetarian lesbian from Canadian cattle country, she is one of the most unlikely artists to make it in the mainstream music business. Katie, though, has always tested boundaries, first as a punk country singer before crossing over to take over the world of pop and what success she's had. 25 years after it was released, her hit, Constant Craving, still receives constant airplay around the world. Now this self-deprecating and rather mischievous star is once more headed our way. How are you feeling about hitting the road again? Oh, well, I'm doing two of my favourite countries. I'm doing Australia and Canada, so... Driving the streets of Toronto with KD Lang, you quickly learn not only does she love Australia, but she hates surprises. Well, you've heard of carpool karaoke, right? Oh, come on. Seriously, we're not doing that, are we? <laughs> no. Okay. I wanted to tell you this is not. Oh, thank karaoke. God. Oh, man. <laughs> you don't know how relieved I am right now. You don't know how relieved I am right now. <laughs> Lucky for us all, KD has a sense of humour. So much for the 60 Minutes interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to become apathetic, cold and removed from here on out. As a performer, As a... KD is anything but removed. Her first pop single, Constant Craving, topped the charts sending her ingenue album platinum and catapulting KD into superstardom. When you were growing up, were you dreaming of the fame that you actually achieved? Did you want to be famous? Oh, there was no question. There was no question that I was going to be famous. It wasn't a dream. <laughs> just no doubt about it. I just all. had no doubt about it and I just did it. To me, it's about hard work and about unflinching determination. To dance is human. But before pop... But to polka is divine! ...came country. When I wink at you at one of my eyes. This quirky cowgirl, who looked more like a cowboy, grew up on the prairie lands of Alberta, Canada. country music stage and ruffled their feathers, but had a voice no one could ignore. Around that time, you were described as someone who didn't just come from another place, you, you appeared to come from another planet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how I'm supposed to take that. You are bizarre. Thank you. I promise that I continue to sing for only the right reasons. Thank you very much, I love you. Did you feel well received? Um, it, at that time, I, d I don't know if I wanted to be well received, but well noticed. <laughs> you achieved that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm talking to myself again. It was love that led KD to write on Janu 25 years ago her first musical foray outside country. It was an intimate ode to unrequited love that resonated everywhere. KD had arrived. Your unique sound, the melancholy in your voice, the emotion that you carry, which is beyond a technical skill, it's something else. Where do you think that comes from? Oh, I don't know. If you ask the British, it was from my father leaving me. They're obsessed with that. Only the British? Especially the British. They're obsessed with that. No matter the reason behind the beautiful voice, the truth is Katie's father did leave the family home for good when she was 12. Do you think your childhood experiences with your parents splitting up shaped a sense of permanence about love about happiness? I would imagine so, sure. I know one thing, that it made me super close to my mother. Feeling the pain that she went through and the embarrassment in the small town. Was she always supportive? 
I mean, I guess before you came out, you yes. told your mum. How old were you then? Mm, 17. Mm -hmm. And how did she react to that? She said, I'd rather be dead than to have you tell me that. Really? Yeah, it was a pretty grim moment. That doesn't sound that supportive. No, it wasn't. Mm -hmm. But she educated herself and reworked her thinking, which is also, you know, probably the most beautiful aspect of it. While her family knew for years what the public could only speculate on, KD confirmed her sexuality just after the release of Ingenue, making her one of the first celebrities to be openly gay. Were you comfortable with the timing of you coming out? Uh, stuff that I've read suggests that you were almost bullied into declaring your position under the threat of, of it being declared for you if you didn't. Well, I wouldn't say bullied, no. But I felt that um, at the time, I was probably going to get outed by Queer Nation. Um, but I thought it would be the most elegant thing to do and also the most responsible thing to do. Just go, I'm gay. And I did risk Ingenue. It was on the line. I mean, I could have, it could have just been the worst thing to happen to me. I can explain. As it turned out, it was possibly the best. KD didn't come out quietly or timidly. When you sat in that chair, did you think this will be provocative? That's why I want to do it. I, I was thinking about other things when I was sitting oh, yeah. in this chair rather what? than whether it was provocative what or not. What were you thinking about? But her now iconic splash with supermodel Cindy Crawford just seemed to add to her allure. Do you think the interest is not so much that you are gay, but that you're a gay icon? You know, I'm a daikon. You're a daikon. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I love that word, <laughs> daikon. It's great. Well, do you think yeah. that's the fascination that you hold up as, as a symbol, as somebody who's important to a community? I hope that's true because it certainly wouldn't make me feel good about myself. I can't say. I don't know. <laughs> Are you being humble? Oh, trying. <laughs> <laughs> Privately and professionally, at just 30, KD Lang was on top of the world. But being at the very top comes at a price. So what was it like to get that success at that time? It, it was all things. I loved it. I, it was amazing. I, turned into an asshole, sometimes, you know, a diva. Um, takes an extraordinary amount of confidence, which I don't know where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> and what you're saying is it's not there now. No, and I think probably the motivation isn't there. I think what scared me probably was seeing the ugly side of me arise that I thought that I was able to contain and I wasn't. I'm not crying, I promise. It's just a little cold. <laughs> Welcome to Canada. This is summer, by the way. <laughs> lovely, lovely. These days, there's nothing diva about Katie Lang. This is the little music shop we came across. Her focus is solely on the music. But for a woman revered for her broad vocal range, her choice of where to go next seems only narrowed by self-doubt. This section right here is where my head's at these days. Are we going to see some KD Lang jazz vocal albums one of these days then? I don't know, I'm, so, I'm kind of intimidated by jazz because there's so many great singers and uh, so many great records. What kind of music are you into? I like all sorts. I love Katie Lang. No, oh, come on. Oh, Katie. Yeah, Katie Lang. Come on. <laughs> She's so <laughs> mediocre and middle of the road. Ah, oh, you know, people say that, but you know, I don't Wait know. Wait a minute, who says that? <laughs> <laughs> you. <laughs> we linger for a while over her own albums, but again, KD. I'll never get like that. I'll never be like that. In fact, I'm going to buy this is lost in the vinyl world of jazz. This is the reason I would quit right here. Oh. <laughs> it's cold and it's a broken hallelujah. A worldwide audience is grateful KD hasn't quit. Her talent recognised with multiple awards 
and cemented in her country's Hall of Fame. Hallelujah. Because only in Canada could there be such a freak as Katie Lang receiving this award. Do you feel like a freak? Yeah. Really? Totally. <laughs> totally. Do you know how hard it is to find clothes? Just clothes for a uh, big-sized androgynous celebrity? It's impossible. That makes me alone feel like a freak. But I also think it's the greatest asset. It makes it exciting and it makes it difficult and it keeps me in check and understanding what is important. My baby don't care who After 25 years, Katie Lang is returning to Ingenue to enjoy the music, without it being drowned out by the trappings of success. It will be the first time Australian audiences will get to see her perform the album, and they will find an artist who has grown up, who is no longer out to be noticed, who simply wants to sing. For someone who was so driven to be cutting edge, to be not mainstream in those early days, to have achieved such mainstream success. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch? That hurts. <laughs> Does it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, guess, I guess what I'm getting at is, is where are you at, Katie Lang? At, at 55, looking back, looking forward, where are you at personally? You know, I have no idea. And that's the most honest and best answer I can give you. I really have no idea where I'm at. And it's nerve-wracking and it's completely comforting all at once. It's just, it's just a very curious journey, this life thing. <laughs>